We need, we need some masala. Uh, so this water is clean, clear rainwater, and we use it four times, and that's the, the nature of the system. Uh, the water board is a crucial element in the building. We've evolved and developed it, and, and uh, we, we ship it all over the world. Uh, the DC pump that pumps it just takes a fraction of electricity. Uh, it's about a $160 item. We usually advise people have one or even two on hand. I mean, it should last five or six years, so we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So if you've got a couple extra pumps, you're good for 15 or 20 years. Uh, so, you know, because we're looking at whatever in the future. Uh, so that makes you in total control of your water. You find yourself, uh, this is the same with the electricity too, but if you, you know, the, if you're looking at the weather and, uh, you know, it says showers for the next three or four days, why, you know, uh, take, a long, take a long bath, take a long shower. Uh, you know, you, you kind of, you, you always will have enough to live, but sometimes you can live more luxuriously on water. Sometimes you can live more luxuriously on power, depending on what your weather is. You kind of relate to the weather. So that gives you water from the sky. It's as simple as that. It's taking the place of pumping water from a deep aquifer and taking a lot of electricity to do so and taking, uh, you know, depleting the aquifers, which are finite eventually, and depleting the aquifers affects uh, things underneath the earth and uh, definitely has an effect on the planet. And like I was telling you yesterday in that uh, whatever county that is in California, they have depleted their aquifers, created a vacuum, sucked the salt water in and polluted their aquifers, and then dumped their sewage in on top of that. So, you know, it's like we do affect things, uh, but just harvesting water off your roof from the sky is a pretty harmless way to live on this planet. So, uh, to, before I take that into the sewage, uh, what we do for hot water is Europe has been using gas demand hot water heaters for years. There are, there are water heaters that the cold comes in and they flash on due to a pressure release uh, valve whenever you turn the tap on and the, uh, the water gets flash heated. It's on demand flash heated. And uh, that water is, so the water comes in cold, it goes through a coil and gets flash heated and comes out hot. So we use those, it uses propane but in an area like this, you hardly use any propane because what they have is a sensor that if the water, so we got cold water coming in, but we don't push cold water in there. We take the cold water uh, from our pump and our pressure tank to panels on the roof first that are always in this climate getting sun. So that's hot water. Then it goes to the gas demand hot water heater. So then it's coming in most of the time hot the sensor senses that it's hot and a flash heater doesn't come on. Only if it's cool from six cloudy days in a row or something does the flash heater come on. It's just a backup. So we send solar hot water through this. 90% of the time in this climate it doesn't come on and you go on with solar hot water. So this is part of the system. You'll see this on the Sutton and on the global model uh, that has different than the electrical panels out front. They're the solar hot water and roof melt panels. And so we get hot water from the sun with gas backup, propane backup. And of course, in a cloudier area, you would use a little more propane than we use here, but still uh, it stores it in, insula in insulated tanks. So you, you uh, like when we were in Montana, the gas hadn't even been hooked up and the guy had a hot screaming hot shower. He was blown away. You know, there, were, there was no utilities coming to the building and you know, he knew what he was buying but he just hadn't seen it all working for him yet and the plumber was there and the electrician was there and everybody just standing around like it was the first hot shower they had ever seen. <laughs> you know, we're all going, well, my God, you know, the, the water is coming out the faucet. Uh, there's no power lines there. There's no well and it's hot. And so, uh, uh, it works. 
So this gives you uh, what I call hot and cold running water, which is, you know, it's thrilling if you're uh, doing it yourself. So, uh, uh, and you, you are in charge of it, in control of it, uh, the quality of it. You're not getting chemicals thrown in it that you have to deal with, that you don't know whether they're causing cancer or not. Uh, and, you know, like, uh, I was just in Baja a few weeks ago because we're doing a project down there, and the guy that I'm doing the project with uh, for is living with his family in Mexico City right now. And he was saying that Mexico City is five months away from being out of water. Uh, you know, they get a lot of rainfall, but they, they run it off of reservoirs. And uh, the reservoirs are low and not filling back up. And so, Mex you know, can you imagine however many, million of pe however many millions of people there are in Mexico City being all there without water? It's going to be a... a it's going to be chaos. So that's what people are looking forward to. And here they are in Mexico City. They get three times as much rain as we do. Another situation was I was in London a few years ago in a taxi going from uh, the airport to town. And it was raining so hard that the guy's windshield wipers couldn't keep up with it in a, one of those little black cabs. And our conversation was about London running out of water. He was, he was telling me London's running out of water, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. All that water just goes down the storm drains, mixes with the sewage, and goes into the ocean or the channel or whatever. And uh, uh, I mean, and I have endless stories like that. I had people come to a seminar and go up to Washington State to build an earthship, and they said, we like everything about them, but we're just a little reluctant on this water catchment system uh, so that we're going to do a well, and we'll pay for the extra panels to pump it and whatever. And they called me up and were talking about, because uh, I was consulting them through the project, and they said, well, we're, we've gotten started. We're drilling our well, but we just can't, you know, can't get our well drilled because it won't stop raining. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's strange <laughs> out there in the real world. Uh, so uh, I don't know. You know, it, it, this can work anywhere. You know, there's... Uh, even when you get down to five or four inches, you can extend it and make it work. Water comes from the sky. We can use it. Another thing I like about it that I hate about the real world is uh, there's no infrastructure. See, we're, we've got our own water on site from the sky. We've got our own power on site from the sky. We treat our own sewage on site. The, the Hopi Indians, when I first came out here a long time ago, I that I got the, uh, the myth that they have, or the legend, that the, they, they say and have said many years that the earth is going to be taken over by spider webs. When I go back to the cities, I see it. You know, I look through, through uh, wires at dirty skies, and there's pipes. Albuquerque and Santa Fe have so many pipes and wires and conduits underground, you have to get a permit to dig a hole in your own backyard. So underground and above ground, there's pipes and wires and infrastructure that takes a lot of money to, to build, a lot of money to upkeep. It goes down like when the ice got on the lines in, in uh, the northeast a few years back and six million people were without power, and I talked about that yesterday. Uh, infrastructure is archaic. It's a thing of the past. It's expensive. It's ugly, not to mention like, like I, a lot of the places I've been recently, uh, looking at sites to build earthships, uh, there's beautiful land, but there's those giant standards of, uh, you know, power lines going through it, and it's just worthless, you know, and it's marching all across the state, and uh, that's what they had trouble uh, fighting. They were fighting that when we were in France. They wanted to take a giant power line from uh, central France down to the south of France and condemn a bunch of farms and houses and things along the way just to deliver power and they're going to lose half of it from line resistance on the way there anyway. It is insane what we're doing. Infrastructure is, I hate it. Uh, I, uh, I just think it's, uh, you know, people talk, about, the president's even talking about, uh, you know, the way he's being advised is to put is to get a solar power system and shove it back into the line grid when you're not using it. All that does is, is reinforce the need for the line grid. 
uh, when really you need to, be, you need to de decrease the need for the line grid because all they're going to do is continue to make more of them. And um, so like I say, it's expensive, it's contaminating in every way, and uh, takes a lot of maintenance, and it makes you vulnerable. In a house that does everything, this home is encountering the sun and the wind and the rain and the thermal mass of the earth, and it's simply, you're the boss of this ship right here, and you're not vulnerable, and uh, that's something for the future because if the, you know, we had this great uh, eco economic crisis here in the last couple of years, as well as fuel shortages and so on, and the gasoline and all of that, how vulnerable do you want to be? You know, your home can be absolutely not vulnerable to any of that. I mean, the power go, the, if the economics go down, d does that mean the infrastructure is going to go down? If, the, if they run out, if the, they have a shortage of fuel, does that mean the infrastructure is going to go down? Well, the infrastructure is subject to that. I think I said something in the Water from the Sky book that uh, anything that goes down, water is going to be affected by it. In other words, if, if line grids go down, the water is being pumped through the cities. That's going to affect water. If there's fuel shortages, that's going to affect water. If there are um, uh, natural holocausts, that's going to affect water. If there are droughts, that's obviously going to affect water. Water is affected by, your water supply to your home in a conventional home is affected by almost everything, including an economic crisis. Uh, and it puts you vulnerable to rising prices and you know, a lot of people, you know, everybody's heard about the people in the cities that freeze to death because they can't pay their utility bill and on and on and on. So anyway, the, just the overview of one of these kind of homes is not only carbon zero and, and, the, and the logical correct thing to do to keep a green planet to, you know, to, uh, in terms of ecology, but it's the best way to save your own ass as well. So, uh, and everything really comes from that. Uh, so, the, uh, that's water. That's how we get it, and it's working here. You'll see it in every one of the buildings. It's been working here for, for 12 or so years, 14 years. I don't know how old this building is anymore. But uh, it's really gone, it gotten improved, and, and every one of these systems like, uh, has, is improving constantly. Uh, the, the, the older buildings, uh, do it, but the newer buildings just do it so much cleaner. I mean, I would compare this building and say the studio building uh, over there to like a 49 Ford, and the newer buildings are like, uh, you know, a 2009 BMW, and uh, they're going to keep getting better and better. It's just, yes, the 49 Ford will get you from Maine to California, but the BMW will get you there with a lot more fun and better tunes and air conditioning and whatever, <laughs> better handling and uh, so that's the way the new buildings are. We need, we need some masala.